Never say never. Welcome to the program. Oh, there was a lot of money bet on the Eagles to just win the money line. One guy put up $300,000 on the Eagles to just win, and he would have gotten $60,000. Nobody gave him a chance. You always got to give him a chance. It's the NFL. See, what happens sometimes is we look at a team, we look at the franchise or the owner, and we go, what a terrible team. No, they're not a terrible team. They got a terrible owner. There's a big difference in that. And you saw that last night. Ron Rivera somehow has kept this team together through all of this and done an unbelievable job. We often fixate on a team's record in the NFL. And if we learned anything from last night, you never really know. And certainly this year, coming into last night's game, Philadelphia, the only undefeated team in the, uh, in the league. But that doesn't matter. It's not what you've done. It's the game in front of you. Because how many times do we go, wait, the Chiefs lost to the Colts? Yes, it happened. Go back to the Colts. The Colts needed a win last year. All they have to do is beat a Jacksonville team that had two wins. They make the playoffs. They got blown out 26 to 11. So every week it feels like, oh, that's a mismatch. I don't know what's a mismatch anymore in the NFL because you have to look at this and go, they have a chance. By the way, the uh, gambling podcast, Dylan, uh, the graphics guy, he said he was taking the commander straight up against the Eagles. Five units last night. We'll have the uh, gambling podcast. Shea and Irving is back this week from uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, where I think he stayed maybe longer than he was supposed to, but he'll be back with Bad Larry. That'll be uh, Thursday on the website. Dan Patrick takes a gamble. All right, see, what's the poll question today? Who should be Ooh. more nervous, Dan? Who okay. uh, who should be more concerned? Bills fans, Eagles fans? Bills fans. Bills fans. I don't have an injury right now with the Eagles. I have I I I guess Josh Allen's okay. I don't know that. But I would say Buffalo because we've seen a couple of bad games from him and bad games in the division coming off that game where they should have closed him out, should have won the game. With Philadelphia, are they going to be able to stop the run? That's, that's going to be, I think, the big story for them. Because that's a, that's a really good team, balanced team. Uh, you have turnovers. I think they had two turnovers the whole season going into last night, and they had three last night. Here's Jalen Hurts, the quarterback for the Eagles after the loss. We can go out there about that. You know, I think in reality, I think um, in the end, it's about us doing the things that we can um, and controlling the things that we can. And I think tonight we, we, weren't, we weren't doing that at a high level. You know, and today it got us. It, it doesn't get you until it gets you, and today it got us. So we learn from it. We move forward. Yeah, I mean, that's the approach. It's one game, bad game. Odds are you're going to have a few of those during the season. And if you go down through history with the NFL of teams that have won the Super Bowl or been to the Super Bowl or been successful in the playoffs, you're going to have a dip. At some point in the season, you'll have a two or three game dip where you might even win, but you don't play well. It just happens. Every team goes through this. Here's Ron Rivera, the Washington Commanders head coach. It means a lot just because the guys were able to stay focused on what's important. It resonates with those guys. I mean, you hear them in the locker room right now, and, and the hard work is beginning to pay off. Things have turned the corner. That's starting to pay off, and, and, and there's a lot of guys that deserve a lot of credit in that locker room. Yeah, but I'm going to start with that coach who somehow through all of this has kept this team unified Carson Wentz, uh, I guess, is ready to come back now. He was injured. Do you put him back in the lineup? Taylor Heineke is serviceable. I like him. Uh, you can tell that he's passionate about it. Uh, he cares. And uh, he said, look, during OTAs, I was told uh, Carson's our starter, and he's our starter when he's healthy. And whatever we need to do, I'm going to do that. I'm fine with that. Okay. I don't think Carson Wentz is that much of an upgrade over Taylor Heineke. Just don't. Um, and, and maybe he'll prove me wrong here, but I have not seen that. Taylor Heineke plays with the confidence that Carson Wentz used to play with. He just doesn't have the talent that Carson Wentz had. Yeah, Marv. 
do you think this might be like a Matt Flynn, Russell Wilson type thing where Matt Flynn got the big contract to go to Seattle and then there was just this guy that came out of nowhere and they're like, you know what? We might as well just stay with him. Is that that same type of thing? Because I love Ty- Taylor Heineke. You want to say Tyler, don't you? I want to say Tyler so bad. I do it every time. Yeah. Tyler Heineke. Yeah. Uh, the problem with that analogy is that Taylor, Tyler Heineke doesn't have the upside that Russell Wilson did. You know, Pete Carroll saw something in Russell Wilson early where he went, you're my guy. They've had Taylor Heineke in the system for a few years. And he took him to the playoffs a couple of years ago when they played, you know, they played against uh, uh, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. What else do we have poll question wise, Seaton? Well, and, you know, actually looking at the commander's schedule coming up, they have uh, – Texans, Falcons, Giants, then a bye week. Okay. Then they have the Giants again, 49ers, uh, the Browns, and the Cowboys. Well, you're in a really tough division. That's, that's a tough. Yeah, no matter what, you're in a tough division. I mean, they might end up, they're, they're 500. They could end up maybe nine wins and not make the playoffs. What, uh, what do the Eagles have coming up? Eagles are at the Colts next week, a 1 p.m. game. They're uh, hosting the Packers and NBC Sunday Night Football. Okay, let me stop you there, Paulie, because I got the Colts running attack with Jonathan Taylor back, and I got the Packers running attack. You know what Washington did last night? They just ran the ball. And I think they have the Titans coming up after that. That's right. Colts, Colts, Packers, Titans, Giants, Bears. Those are five. So you got Saquon Barkley in there? The Bears have the number one rushing offense in football. And Justin Fields? Yeah, five top ten rushing offenses. Okay. That would be a concern as they go through those games there. Because what Washington did was, I think they averaged just over three yards per carry. But they controlled the clock. It was like, all right, we'll get three. We'll get four. Now we're third and three. And as Troy Aikman said that last night, hey, give me third and three. Because I can run everything in my playbook, third and three. And you saw that last night. They were able to control the clock. Yeah, Marv. With this season, especially this season, there's no should-win games. Everything is up for grabs. There's so much parity, and I don't think there's a team that's like high above everyone else. Like, all right, they should win this game. No, nah, the hell they shouldn't because, look, any given Sunday is real this season. Well, it feels like – thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. It took a page out of Fritzy's playbook there. Well done. Yeah.